Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brandon Davis. I'm the founder of the Rags to Riches community. I am highly, highly unqualified to give you any advice about anything. I barely graduated high school. Do not like or comment on any of my videos and please do not subscribe. Let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a fun-filled, exciting, and stimulating episode of the Rags to Riches podcast, webisode, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, today, we're going to talk about something pretty important. So, in the ecosystem that's being built out right now with Pulse, we currently have Hex, we currently have Pulse, but I'm going to talk to you guys today about Three, two or three more uh, options and opportunities that we have to really build this ecosystem out. And I'm going to try to fly here to keep you guys interested. Uh, too ugly to prostitute, too honest to steal. Uh, is that a pot leaf? There's a dog. I appreciate that. I do. He, he probably makes a lot of money off that because he was creative. He's, he stuck out. Riddle the day. My head is red but turns black when you scratch it. What am I? Please comment below. Honor system, even though I know you guys are a bunch of liars and degenerates, you'll use Google. Uh, comment below. See what happens. All right. We're going to start here. And hopefully, hopefully you guys can hear this. I must hate that Okay. Yeah, it makes life move up here. Hey, everybody. I'm pretty sure. All right. You said you want a fork pancake swap. Yep. Fork pancake swap. Okay. Here's what's up. I made the statement that if I wanted to be mean to Ethereum, I could be by loading up their chain with arbitrage opportunities. And I do want to do that because I want to be friendly to Ethereum and I want to see Ethereum fees get lower. And so I had this idea that we were either going to have a wide band or a narrow band bridged assets from Ethereum to Pulse. Okay, so there's a lot to talk about here, right? What he's talking about is forking PancakeSwap. PancakeSwap is a decentralized exchange. Um, the native token for PancakeSwap is Cake. Uh, you've got a decentralized exchange called Uniswap. You guys are familiar with that. Oneinch.io, uh, that exchange, decentralized exchange. Uh, on average, you know, from launch to current, it's about a 68x, all right, so far. Um, and if you got into some of these airdrops, it's significantly more. So to fill out this ecosystem properly, not only do we have HEX. HEX is an excellent certificate of deposit on the blockchain. The next iteration, the next installment of the ecosystem is going to be Pulse. It's going to be a full-blown be a full-blown uh, blockchain, right? So what else do we need? What else, what else would help the situation? That's what I want to talk about today. How the hell do we incentivize people to use Pulse? So we know how to incentivize people. People are greedy. 99% of the projects that people are investing in, they don't care about what that project does. They, they just don't, right? So we got to, we got to, appeal to the greed. They keep as much money as possible, right? So Pulse needs an easy way to onboard ETH users. So we want to move some of the processing and transaction from transactions to Ethereum to Pulse. So we need an easy path to be able to do that once Pulse launches, right? So what's the answer? We're going to fork PancakeSwap. And we're going to do a couple things. Like I said, it's a decentralized exchange. If we fork PancakeSwap, this is what we're going to accomplish. We provide yield farming to people who want to provide liquidity for pulse pair trading and ETH pair trading. The people who provide liquidity will earn rewards with a new coin. This solves the problem of on-ramping new ETH users and decreases the load on Ethereum 
which is very mutually beneficial for Ethereum and Pulse. Pulse gets new users, Ethereum uh, gets decreased gas fees in theory. So we need to provide a, a very easy way for people to not only get their Ethereum to Pulse, but also provide a way for pairs on different networks, the ERC network and the PRC network, to find some type of equilibrium in terms of price. We don't want too much arbitrage because that can bog down both, both networks. So I'm using words that probably 80 or 90% of you don't understand. So I'm going to try to explain to the best of my ability what some of this means. So what is yield farming exactly? What is it and, and why do we need it? it? Why is it beneficial to the network and why is it beneficial to the people who invest in the network? The first thing that I want to go over, I use the word bridge, right? So we have tokens. Uh, let's say we have Ethereum. If we wanted to get Ethereum to Pulse, how would we do that? Well, we would use a bridge, which basically it, it could wrap Ethereum into a, a PRC token, right? So you have PETH, essentially. So step one is we find a way to take Ethereum and have it live on the Pulse blockchain. These are two separate blockchains. We got to figure out a way to convert it, right? Back and forth, really. So step one, we create the bridge. We build the bridge. After we built the bridge, okay, this is where this is where the decentralized exchange comes from. If you guys are familiar with it, you can use MetaMask. You can use OneInch.io. Um, you can use uh, Uniswap. Essentially, with any ERC token, you can swap for another token on the ERC network, coin, whatever you want to call it. So what happens with that? Well, let's say old Johnny here, he wants to buy $1 worth of something, right? So $1 worth of something. Now, uh, Bill over here, he wants to sell it for a very high price. He wants to sell it for $2, all right? So this guy wants to buy for one. He wants to buy as cheap as possible. This guy wants to sell for as most expensive as possible, right? He wants to get the most money he can. So what happens is sometimes you can get to a stalemate. So what's the solution? If he won't sell for lower than $2 and he won't buy for higher than $1, that's where this, this uh, who, what did I say earlier? Uh, I wrote it down. Oh, Martha Snoopert. Martha Snoopert instead of Stewart. That's horrible, I know. I'm sorry. The market maker will buy this for a dollar, okay, and they will mark it up a little bit, and they will try to sell it somewhere between where they bought it and where this higher sell price is. So market makers keep the market moving in case of a stalemate. Another word for that is they keep the market liquid. Illiquid is when there's no financial energy moving, right? None whatsoever. Liquid is the, the opposite. So we, need, we want to keep it moving. If there are stalemates, the market maker breaks that stalemate. Now, how does the market maker break that stalemate? How can they buy something if they don't have any money to buy it with? Well, that's where the yield farming comes in to play, all right? Because you bridge your Ethereum to Pulse, and then you provide liquidity to the exchange, you provide, let's just say, money to the exchange, to the market maker. Once you do that, the market maker is then able to process these transactions when the market gets stuck. All right? So this is an automated market maker system. It's done by smart contract. And they, the market maker needs liquidity to be able to keep the, keep the transactions moving on the network. So what happens is you move your Ethereum from your ERC or your Ethereum from ERC to, to Pulse. Once it's there, what you can do is provide liquidity to the exchange, um, 
and you will earn some type of yield on that by means of a brand new token, okay? So you will have a brand new token that you will be earning yield from when you give the market maker the ability to use your funds to keep transactions processing properly. So you'll get a percent on your money. That's pretty much what yield farming is. It helps provide liquidity to, to new markets and old markets. It keeps things moving smoothly. And because of that, because they're using your money, you are going to benefit. You're going to get a reward in the form of a new token. So if we tie all this together right now, Richard Hart has created a certificate of deposit on the blockchain known as HEX. Okay, You have your actual chain, which is Pulse. You have uh, a potential, and this is you know pretty much what he's saying is going to happen. You have the potential for Pulse Swap. And I just made this up, put a little logo on there. That's not what it's called. But let's just call the decentralized exchange Pulse Swap, P-Swap, whatever. And then, what's the last thing? What's the last thing right now, you know, at least in the immediate future, next couple of years, that we would want to add to this ecosystem? And that is USP, a stable coin, right? So, you know, I, I've been thinking about this a while. I started hearing some of the influencers just kind of graze over it. I don't think they really knew what they were on to, but this is going to be the thing that really attracts people to the network. And here's why. So if you want the network to grow, you want to keep the financial energy inside the confines of that network. A stable coin helps that. Stable coins help people keep um, money in the ecosystem, crypto in, in that ecosystem, right? You don't have to transfer out to USDT. You don't have to go somewhere else to have stability when the market's dropping, all right? You got quicker transactions. It's a hedge against volatility. You can sell out to a stable coin. We'll call it USP, US Pulse. And, you know, it's that's your hedge against volatility. The market's dropping. You can put it into that. It brings confidence in the market. It's like a safe space, right? It's a risk on or risk off switch. So you can immediately go risk off just by swapping to USP with very, very low, low fees. And it, it rounds out the ecosystem. It completes it. All right. So um, I, I think that we will see some sort of iteration of a stable coin you know, during or right after um, our exchange launches, our decentralized exchange. There's going to be some really good opportunities for people who hold Pulse to be able to pair it with uh, some of the uh, ERC tokens that they got snapshots of and, and copies and clones of. You can pair those together in the liquidity pool and you'll be able to make yield on your money. And think about it, you got these... A lot of these pulse tokens, you know, there might be airdrops involved. You'll get those for free and you can just you can be earning money just out of thin air. So we've got some really, really good opportunities coming up in this ecosystem. And it seems to me that Richard just wants to prove a point. He wants to make an ecosystem that thrives. Um, he, he wants it to be self-sustaining. So uh, we'll see in his march and his quest for glory what happens in the meantime. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please voice them in the comments. You can click our Telegram link in the description. All right. We have a bunch of adults in here. Uh, we like to ban people if you're being stupid. So don't join if you're an idiot. Um, but if you have any questions, let us know. This is not a paid group. Uh, I do not charge any of the people in our group anything ever. All right. So thank you for listening and have a great weekend.